Hello. Well, in today's video, I'm going to be taking the Fireball Challenge. What's that about? So if you are a follower of Fireball Tools, you will know that they make a range of uh, very excellent welding equipment, uh, the flagship of which is their fixture table, which is a, a cast iron fixture table, um, which is, and which is also incredibly flat. And in uh, one of his recent videos, Jason, the proprietor of Fireball Tools, threw a challenge out to a couple of professional shops to make a simple frame um, within certain precise specifications. And he, he gave them this drawing. Um, and he took that to three shops. I'll link the video so you can go and see it. And not one of them managed to produce this frame adequately. And I was just idly thinking one day, hell, maybe I'll have a go at making one of those. And so that's what I'm gonna to do today. I'm gonna to have a try. I've got the material I need here. I went and purchased this. This is two by two by uh, three sixteenths wall, uh, A500 steel. Okay. So I am going to cut that and I'm going to attempt to wire feed weld it into a square frame meeting these requirements. And I'll put the, the drawing up on the screen for you to see. Now, the sum total of my wire feed welding experience is, this gnarly piece. Um, the, the purpose of today is more about making uh, a frame that meets requirements more than having really top quality welds on it. That said, I think I'll be able to do all right. In order to achieve it, what I'm gonna do first is cut the excess off of these pieces and make a couple of test bevel cuts. I'm gonna use that to set up my saw as accurately as I can. Um, and then I'm gonna weld a couple of pieces together to get a bit more feel for the process, but also to measure shrinkage, because um, I have no idea what kind of shrinkage to expect with me doing the welding. Uh, and then I'm gonna factor that in, cut the pieces, clamp them together and weld them. But first off, test pieces. So I thought I'd attempt to show you how not flat my table is. So I've got uh, this straight edge clamped so that it's flat against the extreme end of the table and just held up against a, a big V block. And here's a piece of 1 16th inch thick steel. And you can see that in the middle, I'm a 16th high compared to that end. Over here, so I, don't, I don't know if I even want to know what's over there. Hang on, what have we got? There's a piece of quarter inch aluminum. Now it doesn't quite go under, so I've got a feeling I'm about 3 sixteenths. All I'm doing here is taking the excess material from the end of these tubes, making mitre joints, and then welding them together to get an idea of any shrinkage. In the event after measuring before and after fully welding the parts, the amount of shrinkage was actually negligible, but at least I knew. I've been using these vernier calipers in an attempt to get these set up for accurate cutting that has not worked out as well as I had hoped <clears throat> and it's all down to inaccuracy on the saw. If we, if we bring the joint intimately together there it's way off in this direction. Okay, if I bring the two parts together on the square, I've got a huge gap in the joint here and that's that's no good. If I attempt to weld that up, well for a start I'm going to be over dimension and if I attempt to weld that up this is going to pull and it's going to be out of square. You can see some of the problem here, the, the blade is just a very long unsupported span but that's the only way I can saw these parts using this saw otherwise the guides hit 
So that's what I've got. All right, well, got my four pieces cut, ended up having to recut them. Trying to go exactly on length didn't work, and as a result, we've got a few uh, bits and pieces here. So, don't need those. So, I'm going to attempt to tack the frame up now. What I'm going to do is do it in uh, two L shaped pieces, and uh, I'm going to three point it. I'm going to use steel balls to hold these off of the table. So I can try not to influence their flatness by the table. And uh, I'll make the two L's and then tack the two L's together and then measure it and see how flat it is at that stage, decide whether or not to proceed. So the first two pieces clamped up and uh, I'm trying to show you the underside here. I've got three steel balls located in holes on the table and uh, the point of that is that with only three points supporting the two parts that forms a natural plane so they should be flat to each other I do have a stainless steel plate here to hold the two surfaces level and that's resting on top of one ball there uh, have a look at that from up here so you can see I do have a square clamped in the corner to hold the two parts together. And then this is a, it's actually by fireball. This <clears throat> it's kind of a hook clamp, which is really good for these tables. Uh, just holding it down so it doesn't tip back. So that holds it against the middle ball. And you can see I did not end up with very good joints. So anyway, I'm going to tack this up. Do the same for the other two pieces and we'll see where we end up. Well this uh, Cluj Together affair is getting ready for final tack up and uh, there you go you can see it's suspended on the three balls again. Squares in the corners that are to be tacked. Um, the inaccuracy of the cuts is causing difficulties but my vernier calipers say that I am uh, 30 thou under on all dimensions which is intolerance well uh, here it is so far it's now tacked up uh, it is actually square <laughs> didn't really expect it to be but it is um, So that's a win. All right, so just went and reviewed the uh, technique. So I'm going to go outside corner to outside corner, and then to outside corner to outside corner. Then I'm going to go top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom, and then the insides. And Well, here it is, for better or for worse. Um, I don't have a surface plate big enough to hold the whole thing. And so that leads to the next question, which is, well, just how do you check it? So 
To be honest, what I'm about to do is not really valid because I can only check part of the frame at a time. Um, but I'm going to do that and see where I am. So the spec is a sixteenth of an inch, which is 0625, and here's a 060 feeler gauge. And uh, you can see that I've ground off the welds one side per the drawing. And you can see that it is not flat. It has some twist to it. So the question is how much? So I hold it down here. Well, the 60 goes under there. Doesn't go under there. Goes under there. Goes easily under around here. So let's, uh, well, let's jump up to 100. 100 thou. All right, let's take another look at this. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is some of the dumb stuff that I do sometimes. I was not using the correct feeler gauges. Here we are. Here is what is clearly marked as an 060 feeler gauge. It is, however, not an 060 inch feeler gauge. This is my inch feeler gauge set, clearly marked, one thousandth of an inch, Warren Wright, Sheffield, England. If I use this, 20 and 25, you can clearly see it has a rock. But if I hold this corner down, so this is now worst case, So we'll add 10 to that. So we're now 55. That just goes under. Can I do the sums? 45, 55, 60. So it's about 60 thou, a bit less than that. It's a bit less than 60 out of flat. So it's just intolerance, just. Yeah, now in terms of squareness, I'm using a one, two, three block here just to project so that the weld doesn't interfere. It, it has pulled out of square. Just a little bit. So this length should be 20 plus nothing minus a 16th. And it's coming in at 19,950. This way should be 20.25 plus nothing minus 16th. And this is 20.23. Well, there it is. That was, uh, that was, that was fun uh, and way more difficult than I expected it to be. But I just about got it there. The key to doing it the way I did it is really preparation of the joints, the better fit they are, the better chance you have. And you can see that even um, doing it the way I did it, it did pull out a square a little bit. That's, I'm almost certain that's because there was, a, there was the one joint that was quite open that had to be filled. So that would have been a problem. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. That was a lot of fun. It was an interesting experience for me, working my way through the, the process. But doing this the way I did it, I'm only just in. If you go back and look at the fireball video where uh, Jason's animator 
welds up one of these frames using the flat fixture table. It's quick and it's well in. I mean, it's not just inside spec, it's easily in. Um, I had to fight with this to get it there. So can it be done? Sure. Is it the best way? The way I did it? Absolutely not. Um, I would rather have a flat table and when I can, I'm, I intend to get one because every time I do something on that warp table, it's a fight. And, uh, you know, for the small lightweight frames that I make, that's fine. I can tweak them back into shape. But if this was something I was doing for money, I don't have the means to straighten this. This is too beefy of a thing. It's this, it's where it's ended up is where it's ended up. So the right tools go a long way. And as for fab shops that don't have any kind of metrology equipment, I just don't understand that this surface plate I picked up at zero cost um, from an auction and my vernier calipers were $20, $20 or something from an auction. So um, it is possible to obtain this equipment at low cost to verify the quality. Join me next time when I'm going to split the atom cure the world of all known diseases and make vast areas of the Sahara Desert cultivatable. In the meantime, stay safe and well, have a happy 4th of July and all the very best. Be seeing you.